Alright, so how's it going everybody? And today we're taking a look at the two interesting releases from AMD. We're looking at the Ryzen APUs, uh, basically more importantly the Ryzen 8700G. It's kind of unfortunate in my end, you know. And we're also taking a look at the RX 7600 XT. So yeah, without wasting any more time, let's just begin with what I think will drop sooner than the other one which is the RX 7600 XT. Now this is basically have the same core count of the RX 7600, but what really uh, falls for it or gives it one of the most selling point that it's got, you know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So a behemoth, a pretty makes big in terms of VRAM for a budget GPU. And the official pricing is for $330. Now, when you look at the benchmarks, the official AMD benchmarks, and uh, I don't think they are trying to make themselves look good because they're Kind of comparing themselves to themselves actually so you're looking at the arc 7600 uh benchmarks compared to the arc 7600 xt there are some games where it's far more superior as you can see like in forza horizon 5 for example you see like a nearly 30 percent difference but when you look at some other titles that doesn't do vram uh the justice because there is the last of us for example and Sorfield that really benefit greatly from vram so it doesn't give you uh the raw gpu performance um an idea of how it is when you look at the game that really makes all the sense in the world uh, basically you're looking at call of duty modern warfare uh, 3 we're looking at only five to seven percent so yeah and there is also the other game that really makes up for a really good uh, benchmark in terms of the gpu raw power which is chat of the tomb raider our raw our, uh, ultra settings ray tracing and there is also assassin's creed mirage which is basically a amd title so you see this uh whole benchmarks basically ranging from 10 to 15 percent uh, in terms of different between the ROG 7600 and 7600 XT. So expect to find this GPU falling at the same territory uh, of this one. Uh, and the only GPU that you'd find actually in that same spot, which is the ROG 6700 XT, now it's actually a kind of like a really good spot for this gpu to stay at because the sub 300 dollars gpu uh, market region is one of the hardest one you can find actually um the 6700 xt is still one of the best value for money gpus in my opinion so the fact that you can find this gpu now uh kind of uh, trading blows with this gpu i doubt that it will beat it in every game but uh, the more vram would actually make up for it now this would put me in a really a uh, strange situation in my opinion would you rather get a 16 gigabyte gpu uh arc 67 or 7600 xt i'm sorry if i mix up the numbers uh, or you'd rather get an arc 7600 xt with 12 gigabytes of vram but with an arc 6800 performance would you like to see something that beats uh, the rtx 460 ti for a fraction of the cost i mean amd are not trying to you know do that because i don't know why really because this is how the market is going i guess but yeah it is what it is this is a pretty good looking gpu would you wait for it or you'd get the 6700 XT right away? If it's me, I get the 6700 XT. Actually, I wouldn't wait for that one. Uh, but um, nevertheless, for $330, this GPU is going to be a really good competitor to something like the RTX 4060, for example. Now, next up, we have the Ryzen 8000 series uh, APUs. And uh, basically, there are the latest benchmarks that shows the 8700G with the RX 780M having around the same performance of the GTX 1650. Now, the 8700G, I believe, is based on the fifth generation gen ryzen processors so it's got that uh, same architecture so it's kind of equivalent to something like a 5700x and this is what i think it is so yeah it's a pretty power uh, powerful you know cpu for what you're getting and maybe i'm wrong maybe this is a seventh gen cpu actually but uh, this is how the apus used to be you know and the, the 780m is actually a really decent um, apu gpu actually we have seen that before in the laptops uh, versions and mini pcs so yeah getting a performance Almost close to a GDX 1650 is awesome, but the price that's retailing for is $330. I guess this is a lot of money in my opinion. And uh, there is also the 8600G, and this one has the 760M GPU, and actually it's not as fast as the 780M. We're looking at around 10 to 20% less performance, and this is actually pretty significant for a budget APU. I mean, uh, it puts you from playable to an unplayable experience. So that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, it's, I kind of have like uh, the blame on AMD 
maybe I wish I could get my hands on the 8600G with the 780M in it because I know that this CPU will be able to just handle the 780M just fine. Six core software and CPU for a budget gaming is more than enough. And the fact that you're not using these APUs for something like uh, video editing or things like that because it's not supported by Premiere Pro like Intel QuickSync for example, it's kind of, you know, beats the fact that why would you go with a 760M 8600G where you could have uh, tried to add an 780M to that 8600G and make it for sub 250 bucks. It would make a huge selling point at that price to performance territory because there isn't any bottlenecking. So yeah, the APUs, I feel like they are pretty overpriced for what they offer, in my opinion. This is just my humble opinion. But if you are looking for a mini PC, this is the fastest option that you have right now. So yeah, that's been it. If, uh, if you like the video, press on that like button. If I ask you to do that, I can subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.